Will you please explain how Muhammad, the greatest of all the prophets, with his usual keen intellect, was able to mix up the ten plagues of Egypt with the ten commandments at Mount Sinai? Like everything else in his Quran, Muhammad's comprehension of the biblical stories was minimal to say the least. He invariably got them mixed up both in time and space. The stories of the Ten Plagues and the Ten Commandments are very clearly portrayed in the Bible. They are totally incomprehensible and in error in Muhammad's Quran, as we shall presently show. What shall transpire even worse than these errors are the attempts by the Muhammadan scholars of the Quran to brazenly explain the unexplainable with lies, deception, and contortion of both facts and religion. We would like to point out to our listeners, especially those who are followers of Muhammad, that there is not a single Quranic verse in the following examples that represents anything actual from the original biblical story. All of the following dialogue and storylines were created by Muhammad himself. Al-Isra 17101 To Moses we did give nine clear signs. Ask the children of Israel. Well, we have asked the children of Israel, just as Muhammad requested, and they told us that to start with, the clear signs miracles were ten in number and not nine. Al-An'am 27.9 O Moses, verily I am Allah the exalted in might, the wise. Now throw down thy rod. Now put thy hand into thy bosom, and it will come forth white without stain. These are among the nine signs thou wilt take to Pharaoh and his people. Al-A'raf 7.130 We punish the people of Pharaoh with years of drought and shortness of crops that they might receive admonition. I would like to remind our listeners that the stories of the seven good and seven bad crop years were in the days of Joseph and not Moses, a lapse period of almost 400 years. Muhammad was wrong as usual yet again. Al-A'raf 7.133 So we sent plagues on them, wholesale death, locusts, lice, frogs, and blood, signs openly self-explained. Every time the penalty fell on them, they said, O Moses, if thou wilt remove the penalty from us, we shall truly believe in thee, and we shall send away the children of Israel with thee. But every time we removed the penalty from them, they broke their word. So we exacted retribution from them. We drowned them in the sea because they rejected our signs and failed to take warning from them. And we made the people, the Israelites, considered weak and of no account, inheritors of lands in both east and west lands, whereon we sent down our blessings. The fair promise of the Lord was fulfilled for the children of Israel because they had patience and constancy. We took the children of Israel with safety across the sea. The translator of the Quran Abdullah Yusuf Ali, who is extremely knowledgeable in the Bible, nonetheless enumerates with deliberate falsehood the following signs miracles that allegedly befell Egypt. The nine clear signs are the rod, the radiant hand, the years of drought or shortage of water, short crops, and the five mentioned in this verse. These epidemics among men and beasts, locusts, lice, frogs, and the water turning to blood. Ladies and gentlemen, anyone who has read the original biblical version would immediately realize that the so-called miracles of the rod, the radiant hand, the years of drought and shortage of water are not in the story of the Exodus. The Bible recites the following plagues, water turning to blood, frogs, lice, swarm of wild beasts, epidemic, boils, hail, locusts, darkness, and finally the death of the firstborn making ten plagues and not nine. From the very beginning, the foundation stones of Muhammadan Islam reside in the two commandments of the Hebrew Decalogue, the Ten Commandments of the Torah. Genesis 20.3 There is no God but God. There is no image or likeness to God. This should bring to the attention of the listeners the incredible similarity also between Muhammad's Shahada testimony. There is no God but Allah. The Qur'an states that Allah gave Moses certain monitions on tablets of stone and also that he gave him nine clear signs. These two statements have perplexed the Muhammadan commentators very much and every effort is made by them to reconcile the nine signs with the Ten Commandments. Although it is evident from the Qur'an itself 
that the nine clear signs actually refer only to the miracles of Moses, the plagues of Egypt. According to the Mohammedan traditions, Muhammad was very confused in the matter and was himself responsible for the mistakes of the commentators on his book. For it is related in Mishkat al-Masabih, which is an improved version of Masabih al-Sunnah by al-Tabrizi, that a Jew came to Muhammad and asked him about the nine wonders which appeared by the hands of Moses. Muhammad answered him, Do not associate anything with Allah, do not steal, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not take an innocent before the king to be killed, do not practice magic, do not take interest, do not accuse an innocent woman of adultery, do not run away in battle, and especially for you Jews, not to work on the Sabbath. Muhammad was of course his usual and understandable ignorant self, in error on five of the items he mentioned, as well as having given the wrong answer to the question, which related to the Ten Plagues and not the Ten Commandments. Al-Muhaddith Abdullah Haqq al-Dahwali remarks on this tradition that the Jew asked Muhammad about the nine miracles or plagues of Egypt, but Muhammad answered him in error with the Ten Commandments. A comparison of the Ten Commandments given by the great Hebrew law giver Moses with those recorded in the above tradition and in the sixth surah of the Quran, verse 152, will show how imperfectly Muhammad was acquainted with the biblical scriptures. The commentator Hussein, who wrote 400 years ago, says that the following verses in Surah Al-An'am are those ten commandments, which in every dispensation are incumbent on mankind and cannot be abrogated, meaning undoubtedly the ten commandments from Moses. Al-An'am 6.151 say, Come, I will rehearse what your Lord has made binding on you, that you assign not to him as a partner, that you be good to your parents, that you slay not your children, that you come not near to pollutions outward or inward, that you slay not anyone whom Allah hath forbidden you unless for a just cause. Come not nigh to the substance of the orphan, but to improve it until he came of age. Use a full measure and a just balance. And when you give judgment, observe justice, even though if the affair be a kinsman. Fulfill the covenant of Allah. Follow not other paths, lest ye be scattered from his path. This he hath enjoined so that we may fear him. Compare the above with the biblical Ten Commandments. Exodus 20.3 You shall have no other gods beside me. You shall make no graven images. You shall not utter the name of God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, there is no human being on earth who can show a single verse in Muhammad's Quran that represents a new intellectual, moral, spiritual, and original concept, precept, thought, or idea which is in any way, shape, or form equal to or superior to these that Muhammad plagiarized, plundered, pirated and or perverted from the Hebrew Bible.